Hi, I'm Alexandra from Artinis Medical Systems. In the last video, we went over the formulas for absorbance, also known as optical density, and transmittance. This time, we will dive deeper into the concepts behind the formulas. For that, let's go back a few hundred years. In 1729, Lambert, a Swiss polymathematician, stated that absorbance depends on length. In other words, the level of absorbance by a tissue is dependent on the distance the light has to travel to go through it. Written as a formula, it gives absorbance equal molecular extension coefficient times length. A century later, in 1852, Beer, a German physicist, stated that the absorbance also depends on concentration. As we can see in this picture, there is higher concentration of chromophores, therefore more of the light will be absorbed which will make the absorbance level rise. Written as a formula, it gives absorbance equals molecular extension coefficient times concentration. Combining all these formulas gives us the Beer-Lambert law, written as the following equation. The absorbance equals the logarithm of the incoming light divided by the outgoing light, which equals molecular extension coefficient times concentration times length. In near-infrared spectroscopy, we use a modified version of this formula, the modified lambert beer law, to estimate concentration changes from physical properties. Why does it need to be modified? Well, because the regular beer lambert law assumes that light does not scatter in the medium it is measuring. But in biological tissue, light does scatter. Now, how is it modified? Well, we include a delta, so we measure a change, and we included a differential path length factor, or DPF. Let me explain. In this picture, we can see that a transmitter and a receiver are placed on the skin. In theory, a thin line of light goes from one to the other. But we saw that some of the light is scattered and some of the light is absorbed. In reality, this ray of light is more broad or banana-shaped with scattering happening in many places along the ray. To correct for these light losses, we included the DPF, which is a constant factor. For the brain, this is around 6, while for muscle research, it is generally around 4. Concretely speaking, measuring difference in light absorption allows us to estimate concentration changes, thanks to the intrinsic absorption of the light by specific chromophores. In this graph, on the x-axis is the near-infrared wavelength, from 650 to 1000 nanometers. On the y-axis, you can see the absorption coefficient. We are going to focus on two chromophores in our tissues. We're going to look at oxyhemoglobin in red and deoxyhemoglobin in blue. Why these two chromophores? Because they can tell us about oxygen consumption. For our systems, we're using two specific wavelengths. 760 and 850 nanometers. 760, because we can see that the chromophore deoxyhemoglobin is the main absorber. 850, because we can see that the chromophore oxyhemoglobin is the main absorber. This concludes our second video on the concepts of absorbance and transmittance. For more video explaining near-infrared spectroscopy concepts, feel free to check out our YouTube playlist. Thank you for your attention.